Welcome to Chasing Hard Podcast, where we talk about trusting God when life doesn't turn out the way we planned. I recently heard a phrase that I've heard before, I just forgot about it, um, and it got me thinking along the lines of trusting God when life doesn't turn out the way we plan. I am told that the Navy SEALs, when, when they are going through the training, the rigorous training that they go through to become a Navy SEAL, it's hard. Hard on their bodies, hard mentally, hard on every aspect of their persons. And their saying is, embrace the hard. And I also heard this statistic, which is really interesting to me, that um, no matter how hard it gets for those Navy SEAL trainees, they are only actually using 40% of their capacity. Like they have 60% more capacity to do all the things they need to do, which brought me back to life, to us doing life hard. I am also reminded over and over on a regular basis by the people that I talk with on the podcast, by the people that I do life with, life is filled with hard things. It just is. Like if you haven't encountered hard things in your life yet, kudos, I, I guess. Hard things tend to make us stronger and, and more resilient and more in tune with what God wants for us. Hardships typically cause us to turn to God. I know um, I've heard of a few incidents over the past few weeks since this Hamas-Israeli conflict that there have been revivals breaking out all across the United States and probably the world. Because if you look at everything that's going on in our world, it's a scary time. It's an uncertain time. And it lines up with end time happenings. Not saying the end is near. I'm not saying get ready because it's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. But I am saying that there are a lot of things going on in our world. A lot of things taking place in our world that line up with prophecy. Things that were prophesied thousands of years ago about what would take place, they're happening now. Like, if you choose to believe, if you're a believer and you choose to believe that, kudos, and if you don't, that's fine. Welcome to this space anyway. And so back to the embrace the suck. That's the premise, really, of everything that we talk about here. Like when when hard things come your way, and many of us have experienced many hardships, and I'm sure we'll experience many more. Many of us have have dealt with overwhelming, incomprehensible things in our lives that I, I don't know how or where you got the strength. And and then I do because God is always with us. And I believe that he's with us, even if we choose to believe his, he exists or not. God is here to help us embrace the suck. And when we embrace the suck, it tends to maybe not suck as much. I often tell the story of the first time I went to a counselor. I was 30 years old. It's a few decades ago, folks, 30 years old in counseling. And my counselor said something profound. He said, life is difficult. That pulled me up short. Life is difficult. Like I thought, because my life wasn't turning out the way I planned, I was doing something wrong. I was doing something contrary to, I didn't know what it was, but I knew that because my life was so difficult, I must be doing something wrong. And when he said those words to me, life is difficult. 
It freed me up. I embraced the suck. Like I embraced the fact that life is difficult, can be difficult, has been difficult, will be difficult. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Overcoming the world, Jesus already paid the price and ultimately we don't have to. Does that mean we won't go through hard times? Nope. Does that mean life will be easy? Uh-uh. It does not mean any of those things. It just means that in the end, and there is an end for all of us, it's the price has already been paid. Like I don't have to stand before the almighty God and be judged for my lack of ability to pay for the sins that I have committed, for the times that I have doubted, embracing the suck is embracing the hard times. It, I remember this one particular hard time. Relationship hard times are usually the most difficult. And there was one serious relationship that, well, it was hard. It was always hard. And I was always trying to figure out what to do, what I needed to do differently, believe differently, think differently, pray differently, what I needed to do. And finally, I came to this point. I had, I had gone through the grieving process, all the steps, which aren't linear, by the way. You go in and out of all of them. When I got to the final stage of acceptance is when I was able to make peace and make good and healthy choices. I embraced the suck. Like maybe embracing the suck looks different for all of us. I certainly would never be able to do what the Navy SEALs do. Not even in my youngest, most healthiest viral days. Nope. But maybe embracing the suck looks differently for all of us. Whatever embracing the suck means, like whatever's going on in your life, embracing that. Run to the roar, like is, is a way to gather some peace, to get some peace, to walk in some peace. Run to the roar. Run to the roar is another such phrase. Embrace the suck. Embrace the hard. Instead of running away from the things that are scary, from the things that hurt, from the things that pull us up short, embrace it. Run toward it. Now, that does not mean that we have to stay in situations that are life-threatening. It does not mean that we stay in relationships that are abusive. That's not embracing the suck. That's not running to the roar. We have responsibility to protect ourselves and the people who are in our sphere of influence and protection. We, we have a, an obligation and a responsibility to do those things to the best of our ability, to, to protect, to nourish, to cherish. That's not embracing the suck. Staying in a dysfunctional, abusive situation is not embracing hard. It's not chasing hard. It's just not. I know that's probably hard for some people to hear. I know of a particular woman who has been in an extremely dysfunctional home life situation for decades. It's chaotic and it's not healthy. And she hasn't always made the right choices when she needed to. And as much as I try to speak that to her in love, still her choice and she still has a part to play and responsibility. Like there comes a time when, when it's, it's going to require more than just praying and believing and trusting God with your situation. We have to 
own our part, take responsibility, and do what we need to do, and allow God to work on our behalf, and trust him with the process and with the outcome. And sometimes that's the most difficult thing to do, trusting God when life doesn't turn out the way we planned, trusting God with important relationships, trusting God with important life situations, job situations, financial situations, health situations, trusting God with those things and trusting him with the outcome. It's, that's not easy. And so I want to encourage you today as we're talking about this, to maybe focus on the fact that this is not the end of the story. This is not your forever home. This life has a shelf life. Like this life will come to an end. And living life with that end in mind is probably the most important thing, decision we will ever make. Knowing that this is not the end of the story is perhaps the biggest chasing hard thing we will ever do. And so, by the way, if you didn't notice, it was just me today. Um, yeah, that that just struck me. And, and I knew as soon as I heard those words that they so align with chasing hard that we needed to talk about those things. So thanks for listening to this short podcast. But hey, sometimes I'm sure you can appreciate short because you have things to do. And I hope you join next week for Chasing Hard Podcast. <laughs>